Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Juz and Sipara number 26 starts from Surah Al Ahqaf. And we recited a few verses from Surah Al Hujurat as normal. We will uh, look at the um, literal sort of translation and also some tafsir of those verses that uh, we have recited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding and ability to act upon them. Today is the 26th uh, of uh, Ramadan. Um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the uh, further ability to inshallah keep on uh, fasting and keep on practicing the um, ibadat, the du'as, and the nawafil. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our efforts in this regard and accept our du'as. Ameen. Um, this uh, juz is 26, as I said, and Surah Al Ahqaf um, also begins from Hamim. Hamim, as we said before, are the huruf muqatta'at, and uh, in, in most cases, uh, almost all cases, where Hamim, Alif Lam, Mim, Kaf, Aya, Ain, Sin, Yasin, Baha, all these different muqatta'at um, uh, are mentioned, then immediately after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something about the book, about the Quran, about the revelation. And similar is here, after Hamim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tanzeer al kitabi min Allah al Aziz al Hakim. This book, um, the revelation of this book is from Allah, who is uh, Almighty and who is also all wise. And again, also to mention that um, these are Hawamim. Hawamim are those uh, surahs that begins with Hamim. Um, so they are called Hawamim, that's the plural. And so this begins from uh, this. Uh, um, Surah Al-Ahqaf and uh, as we see Ahqaf gives warning to uh, those who deny the truth and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment comes then neither the sea nor the dry land can protect. Um, it also talks about the fact that there is a um, there's a reference in this surah to the people of Ad previous nations and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment for their sins. So that's the Surah um, Al-Ahqaf. Then we see Surah uh, Muhammad uh, Surah Muhammad begins and um, it begins from uh, kafaru wa saddu an a'malahum. So here this Surah talks about the real struggle that will be um, you know, taking place between the truth and falsehood. The, the, the normal struggle that um, takes place between the, 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 the truth and the falsehood, um, that struggle is talked about. In this struggle, the truth will be uh, victorious and the falsehood and its, its uh, um, uh, votaries will, and allies will, will, will be um, utterly defeated, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And the separation will happen between those who believe and those who uh, deny the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So this is the summary in a nutshell of this uh, surah. Then we have the famous surah al-Fatih, which was revealed after the 6th of Hijri or at the 6th of Hijri when the Treaty of Hudaybiyah was struck. And this was a tremendous victory as people and the history saw after just two years that uh, Makkah was conquered. So, inna fatahna laka fathan mubina. Allah has given you a clear victory. Um, o Prophet Sallallahu we've given you. And when the Prophet Sallallahu conquered Makkah, he was reciting uh, the beginning of the verses of Surah Al-Fatih when he was entering, subhanAllah, to, to Makkah, to the city of Makkah as a conqueror. Just um, less than eight years ago, he was forced to flee and because he persevered and they became patient and they struggled in the path of Allah and they stood fast. Allah gave them victory over the same city that forced him out uh, as, a, as a person who was migrating to Medina. But subhanAllah, after so short period of time, 
they became victorious. And so he was reciting and on the back of his, uh, his mount, um, his forehead, subhanAllah, was almost touching the back of the camel, Sahaba say. Uh, and he was like out of uh, humbleness um, reciting these verses of Quran. So it is humbleness, it is down to earthness, it is uh, um, only um, obedience to Allah and, and patience that gives people victory, not weaponries and not the technologies and nothing else. It's the power of Allah that brings the real victory. And if it did it yesterday, it will do the same today. And so we should more focus on turning back to Allah, asking for istighfar. And this um, Ramadan is here to protect us. And after the three, four days that are left out of Ramadan, subhanAllah, um, we need to take care of our Iman. Just like somebody said earlier that Ramadan is leaving. And the message of Ramadan is that he take care of your Imans, take care of your faiths. So may Allah protect us. Uh, um, and so Surah Al-Fatih is, is a great surah and uh, it says He talks about all the uh, victories and, and the comfort that Allah gave to the hearts of the believers and Allah says To Allah belongs the junood, the armies of the heavens and the earth, the mosquitoes, the flood, the wind, the volcanoes the earthquakes, all these are the angels, the birds, Ababil. These are the these are the armies of Allah. Allah knows them and, and they belong to Allah. So if we belong to Allah and Allah will protect us, then Allah can use any of these armies. Allah used those armies against and for people. I mean today use the invisible army of coronavirus. Yeah, it's almost um, you know. Um, upon us um, and, and, and the humanity is almost like sort of you know so to speak um, helpless no vaccine yet to be found so you're fighting against in a, a virus that is invisible that's the Janud Allah that's why some scholars say we should not use even the the word fighting you can't fight against Allah um, so this is the, the the reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends those Janud of uh, his and he knows them. Uh, and as he says in another place in Quran, um, only he knows his army and his uh, soldiers because he is all knowing and all wise. Uh, so, anyway, this is the um, surah that talks about that. And it talks about moral and physical victory of Islam and over the forces of the disbelief and the hypocrites and uh, disbelievers will be disappointed with this victory Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. Allah sent down the Quran and has created the heaven and the earth this uh, surah says and in this Jews Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discussed that the gods of the shirk have created nothing. Is there any proof for shirk and people who associate others with Allah? Do they have any proof on, on that? Of course not. The truth of the uh, revelation is manifest. And so Quran verifies previous uh, revelations. Um, the fate of Ad is mentioned and discussed here. A group of jinn accepting the message of Islam. It is also mentioned here. And those who believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their sins are removed and their condition improved. And the opponents of the truth will perish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the prophet is asked to uh, pray for the believers and um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do not be uh, intimidated um, stand firm and struggle for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the victory that um, sort of you know um, comes uh, through the truce of Hudaybiyah is discussed here and the hypocrites and the uh, fake, you know, they're, they're, they're lame and, and, and sort of, you know, fake is, excuses are mentioned here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with the believers who obey with uh, um, and uh, who also obey the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And also um, it is mentioned the, that the ultimate triumph uh, of Islam 
is real that it will get and the respect of the Prophet uh, and proper manner of uh, uh, dealing with uh, reports um, are mentioned in Surah Hujurat and revelations among the believers um, sorry relationships the relations between the believe amongst the believers is mentioned here moral and ethical teachings to keep um, the group uh, and, and, and group harmony and, and harmony in society and solidarity that's mentioned in Surah Hujurat all these different universal um, beautiful rules and then the relations with groups and tribes is mentioned and also faith is a favor of Allah to this uh, to to the believers Allah um, showed his favor to the believers when he bestowed upon them the faith and he uh, blessed them with that Allah is closer to us than our life vein our jugular vein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he's so close to us and death and the end of the world uh, uh, and uh, uh, also the day of resurrection is discussed here uh, it is also discussed that uh, the, the falsehood is about to end and the righteous shall be um, rewarded um, the character of the righteous people uh, is mentioned and the Prophet Ibrahim and his um, um, uh, angel visitors are mentioned that how they came to visit him so this is in a nutshell the um, a summary of this Jews inshallah we are going now to look at the verses that uh, we recited um, of Surah Al-Hujurat um, Surah Al-Hujurat uh, uh, Hujurat is a plural of Hujra by the way and um, it is dwelling chambers the rooms and dwelling chambers where the Prophet uh, lived so because that word is mentioned in this surah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking um, to the believers to respect the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do not even to raise their voice above the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that is something uh, even relevant today so many scholars interpret the fact that ya ayyuhalladhina amanu la tarfa'u which is verse number 2 la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawtin nabiy o believers do not raise your voice above the voice of the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam because do not even speak to him in the same tone and accent that you speak to each other loudly so lower your voice lower your uh, uh, position and, and, and your, your your status and your voice in front of Prophet so that you will have lost your amal means you will have lost your iman disrespecting the Prophet ﷺ is against one's faith saying anything deliberately obviously against the Prophet ﷺ or his family or any sort of disrespect of any uh, uh, you know in any shape or form is is uh, is to lose one's iman and that's what Allah says here that you wouldn't have have even realized and and you would have lost your iman that's why when it comes to khatm nubuwa when it comes to the finality of the prophethood, when it comes to the, the, the respect of the Prophet وسلم, that's paramount. It's very uh, important because otherwise we would have lost our Iman. That's, that's, that's the, and that's the reason why Muslims across the globe uh, revere and respect and venerate the Prophet وسلم, and his status. And they cannot um, take in that insult to this uh, great man. Because he is more beloved to the Muslims than themselves, their families, their children. And that's what the Prophet says. He says that uh, uh, A person will never become a true believer until I am more beloved to him than himself, children, family, and everything else in the whole wide world. He will never be a Muslim. And so we need to inculcate him implant and teach our children the love of the Prophet ﷺ. so loving the Prophet ﷺ also here and, and, and lo lowering one's um, voice in front of the Prophet's voice is to listen to the hadith because hadith is the Prophet's voice and if we impose our opinion and we leave out the hadith and sunnah and we go against it and rather give preference to someone else's 
uh, a philosophy or wisdom or our own opinion, then that is basically what Quran is uh, warning us against, that you should not raise your voice in front of the Prophet i.e. in front of his Sunnah. So Sunnah is crucial that we need to practice and look at. So this uh, surah talks about the fact that when people came to the Prophet and they were shouting out to him from the outside, the Prophet was inside taking rest, uh, it was like noon time, and they were saying, Ukhruj lana ya Muhammad, Ukhruj lana, come out, come outside, O Muhammad, come outside, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so Allah did not like that. And he said, those who do this are stupid. They are not, they, they, they're not the men of understanding. They are silly people. If they knew, they would have waited outside until you came out and then they should have told you. Allah. This is how high the status of the Prophet is in the sight of Allah. That Allah did not like those who called the Prophet out, yeah, and he did come out uh, uh, eventually. But Allah revealed these verses, warning the, uh, the, the the believing people that you should not do that. You should not raise your voices. Respect, and and that's why many scholars in the tafsir of these ayat says that since and hence, uh, since the scholars and, and ulama, okay, they are the inheritors of the Prophet. Uh, uh, people should also give respect to the scholars. They should, should respect the scholars. Disrespecting the scholars of Islam is disrespecting the Sunnah and eventually disrespecting Billah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we need to respect, uh, and that's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, man lam yarham wa lam Whoever did not have mercy and kindness, show kindness to the children and respect to the, to the, to the elders and also to the scholars, then he's not from my son, from my ummah. And, and now that's what shaitan wants to create a rift and disrespect and gap between the awam, those who are the, the lay people and the scholars. Yes, of course, there are uh, different people and not every scholar, uh, you know, is what he says that he is but the matter of the fact is that we just leave that between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so anyway that's a different topic but respect of the Prophet sallallahu is also respect of the sunnah respect of the deen and showing respect to the scholars of Islam may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability so this surah talks about that and it says those who will lower their voices in front of Allah and in front of the Prophet sallallahu rather they are the ones that Allah tested their, their Iman. Uh, Allah has tested and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put Iman into their hearts and Allah will forgive their sins and they have ajrun azim. They, they have a tremendous reward from the Prophet uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the um, surah goes on then uh, from the verses that we cited today. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just before that, there's another verse which is, um, yeah, which is very uh, crucial where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that um, if a person uh, brings irajaakum, uh, all believing people, uh, and this verse is the um, principle of Islamic journalism, Islamic, you know, um, um, sahafat, we call it journalism, because obviously. Um, it, it talks about a beautiful principle. This is for everyone, and particularly in media and social media, where people spread so much rumors. So this is a beautiful uh, a yardstick, you know, from the Prophet from, from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Says, uh, "Oh, believing people, if when a sinful sinful person brings you a, a report, some news, then fatabayyanu verify uh, that news because." Um, verify its correctness, okay? Verify the source. Do not just act upon it or do not just forward it, but verify the correctness of the report and news, uh, lest uh, you should harm basically a people out of ignorance and then you reproach and, and sort of regret it. Um, the background of this uh, backdrop of this verse is such that people 
um, acted upon just barely news. Somebody brought news that somebody, uh, a tribe was going to attack and people went to attack them back and stuff. So they were nearly about to kill the Muslims, but the news were not verified. They were not checked with the correct sources. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this beautiful principle out of the mistake that the Sahaba did, radiallahu anhum. And that's how we learn. That's how we have this beautiful principle that we need to verify. Somebody comes to you and says, so-and-so said so-and-so. Well, did he say it or not? Or, you know, so th this is the problem. Just by uh, uh, the fact that it's came through a Facebook uh, page or uh, even a TV channel or, or things like that, especially in the coronavirus, um, you know, pandemic time, subhanAllah, all these various rumors and, and false news and, and conspiracy theories are just floating at the surface, just flying over everywhere. And so we need to be careful. This is the beautiful you know, uh, principle that we need to verify the correctness of the news and so that we will not regret, inshallah, and harm any other people. So that's a very important principle here. The next one where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ikhwa in this surah. And by the way, Surah Hujrat is also uh, called Surah Akhlaq because it mentions so many beautiful akhlaq uh, and it requires a, uh, not only one session but many, many, many sessions um, to explain this. People have written, scholars, volumes of tafsir of this surah. Inshallah, in the future sometime we will need to go through this to learn all these different beautiful gems of akhlaq and for for the individuals as uh, as well as for the islamic and, and, and pious society because at the time of revelation of this surah medina was a newly formed society and these were really you know timely advices and, and instructions and principles for the harmony and good of the society so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next that um al-mu'minuna ikhwa uh, uh, verily, the relationship between a believing person and another believing person is that of the brotherhood. Innama is kalimat hasr, which means the relationship between a believing person and another believing person, if there's any relationship, that is the brotherhood. That's why the uh, translations, when you read of Quran, is the believers are but brothers to one another. The believers are but you know, uh, uh, brother, uh, one brotherhood. So that's number one. Secondly, the second interpretation could be that the real brotherhood, the real brotherhood in the world, if there is any real brotherhood that exists, that is between a believing person and another believing person. Because any other brotherhood would just perish and vanish through time. But the faith, the, 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 the brotherhood in faith um, will never, because faith doesn't disappear, alhamdulillah. And so long as we believe in the same God and we are believers, then we are brothers. And so the Prophet ﷺ said so many hadith that a believing person should not let the other believing person down. A believing person must not um, let other believing person, whether it's male or female, brother and sister, uh, without help. And they are brothers. They should um, stand uh, shoulder to shoulder to support and cooperate with each other in good. So, so innamal mu'minuna ikhwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says that um, the next verse, which is, if they fight with each other, then it's wajib, it's a command to uh, bring peace and reconciliation between your two brothers. You do not just uh, uh, listen that two brothers are not talking to each other or two brothers are not sort of two families, there's a, there's, a, there's a tension between them and you just ignore them? No. This is wajib, this is fault, that you should do something about it. You should go out and, and, and bring peace between them and reconciliation. For aslihu baynahuma, aslihu, this is amr, this is a command, and so it's fault. And then um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, aslihu bayna akhawaykum, Reconcile between your two brothers. So that you may be shown mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then this brotherhood is, is damaged through backbiting, is damaged through uh, ridicule, uh, ridiculing each other, it's damaged through uh, looking down upon each other. And so all these different doors of um, you know uh, damage to the brotherhood are closed, they're being closed. So uh, spying is one of them. Suspicions, uh, 
is another one. So all these are mentioned in these few verses in here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya yulidina amanu, O believing people, la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin. La yaskhar qawmun qawmun min qawmin. Do not let some men ridicule others. Asa an yakunu khayran minhum, they may be better than them. Who knows? The ones that you ridicule, your own brothers, may be better in the sight of Allah than, than yourself. And then, nor let some women ridicule other women. These women may be better than them, than the ones who are ridiculing them. So, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further says uh, that, um, uh, Do not defame one another. Do not talk ill of each other, nor call each other by offensive and bad uh, nicknames by offensive and bad nicknames. Wala thalmizu anfusakum, wala tanabazu bil alqab. Bi salismu al fusuk ba'd al iman. It is, um, you know, how bad it is to act uh, rebelliously after having faith. After having faith, it is so bad to act, you know, rebelliously. Bi salismu al fusuk ba'd al iman. Wama lam yatub faulaika hu zali. Whoever do not repent to Allah, they are the, tr the, the true transgressors. And the next verse also mentions something uh, very crucial. O believers, abstain from many of the uh, suspicions. Suspicions. And in indeed, some of the suspicions are sins. You suspect someone for no reason. You have no evidence. But you just mere suspicion that's not allowed because that's going to create a tension between you and your brother if he realizes or she knows what you've talked about or things like that and it leads to the backbiting which is discussed in the next surah and often the suspicion also uh, you know uh, sort of you know um, leads to spying on other people so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, do not spy do not spy on on people and nor backbite one another. And this backbiting is, is really a killer. It is a true killer for our community, for our society, for the families. And it's so bad. It's even the, you know, the, the um, sin of backbiting and ghiba is ashaddu min zina, is worse than committing adultery. Worse than committing adultery and fornication, astaghfirullah. So, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَن يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُوهُ Would any of you like to eat the flesh of their dead brother? You would indeed despise that. فَكَرِهْتُمُوهُ You would despise that. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't do that. Okay? And, and, and so, so this is uh, another, um, you know, great um, advice that we should stay away from from um, unfortunately today we hardly see any gathering of people where they do don't bear backbite especially women and men and, and everything so that's very very crucial that we just stay quiet there is a hadith where uh, it mentions that two women ya yeah, subhanallah they were the sahih hadith they they fell sort of um not very well um and they felt sick in sort of in, in ramadan and the prophet ﷺ was informed he called upon them and he, he called it on on a vessel a, an empty pot and he asked him to vomit in there and they vomited fresh blood and and, and flesh subhanallah and so they asked when it was inquired the prophet ﷺ said they ate the flesh of their sister means they backbite it so through allah through uh, the prophet ﷺ, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested the reality and showed the real and showcased the reality of backbiting to the prophet wasallam and to the believing people that backbiting is real um uh, uh, you know in, in terms of its uh, um you know uh, disgustness that it is like eating your own muslim brother's uh, flesh uh, while they are dead so your own brother a human then muslim then dead so imagine eating that flesh so this is very 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 crucial that we need to uh, stay away 
from people's um, you know backbiting. There's no uh, benefit. It's really really um, um, bad and evil sin that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala even will not forget. Uh, sorry, forgive unless the person who's be, being backbited is is willing to forgive. Subhanallah. And so sometimes we don't know who we backbited. We even forget. How are we gonna go out and ask him to forgive us? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And the next verse is also very, very um, prominent in terms of its uh, role to play in the Muslim or human society rather. Ya ayyuhan nas, Allah is calling people, not uh, believing people here, just people. Inna khalaqnakum min dhakar wa untha. We have created you from a single soul, dhakar, from a single uh, sort of, you know, uh, pair. Uh, male and female and وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَضَائِلًا and then we have made you to different peoples and tribes لِتَعَارَفُوا why? not to be boasting about I'm Chaudhry, I'm Patan I'm you know this, I'm that, I'm Sayyid I'm from this tribe, I'm from that tribe no, 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 that's so bad the only reason Allah said I divided you into nations and tribes لِتَعَارَفُوا to get to know each other to identify one another, to get to know each other. Imagine that everybody was from the same tribe, like, you know, there'll be no beauty and diversity, but people are from different castes, different uh, tribes, different nations. This is Turks, these are Turks, those are Arabs, those are Caucasians, those are Europeans, those are Asians, those are far Asians, those are Indians, you know, subcontinent is different to the other. So, so this is variety. But the only reason Allah says I've done that for is لتعرفوا, to get to know each other subhanAllah and also to to identify each other yeah uh, so um, and, and for nothing else and because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Do you consider yourself to be higher in status just because you were born into a tribe or a nation or a people? Allah says no, 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 no. The most uh, um, um, honor, honor, uh, honored person and the, the noblest person akramakum, the noblest person amongst you in the sight of Allah is the one who has more piety in his heart and we don't know who contains taqwa and piety in his heart because heart is only known to Allah and that's what the Prophet says at taqwa ha'una Taqwa is not in, in your beard, taqwa is not in the way you wear your clothing or the way you uh, sort of you know, talk or walk or anything like that. Taqwa is basically in the heart which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only He is aware of. So um, the most, um, the noblest person, Allah says, is the one who is more muttaqi, subhanAllah. Ya yeah, Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, Wattaqullah. Inna Allah alimun khabir. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing and He is all aware. Who is muttaqi, who is not, Allah knows. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in different other places that La tuzakku anfusakum huwa a'lamu biman ittaqa. Do not come forward and say, I'm pious and I'm this and I'm that. Allah knows who is muttaqi. Allah knows because we all are sinful. It doesn't mean that when Allah covers our sins that we are pious people all of a sudden, no. And, and it reminds me of a beautiful uh, saying of a scholar when somebody praised him as a pious person, he said, oh person, you're praising me being a pious person, basically you're praising Allah, SubhanAllah. You're praising Allah who covered my sins. You're not praising me because I'm a sinful person. You're praising Allah who covered my sins. And because you don't know my sins, you say I'm a pious person. May Allah make us all pious people and may Allah cover our sins and may Allah forgive them for us. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us about in this surah, um, that uh, the reality of the fact is that we have created you from the, 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 the same couple, Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayha salatu wa salam, and then we've created you into different tribes and, and, and different nations and that's why um, finally we need to uh, make you know be, be careful when it comes to the fact that when people 
uh, you know, intermarry with different families and different tribes and castes, uh, we should be uh, careful when we uh, uh, deal with that issue because um, religiosity and deen is the first priority and nothing else. Like the Prophet says, yes, we could look into the caste and into the you know other backgrounds and stuff like that, but not as a as a uh, um, criterion for success or not sorry not not as a criteria for um you know the the, the whole or, or the solely criteria for that relationship may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding to achieve taqwa and to understand the quran and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to um uh, be and keep steadfast on the right path i mean